Okay, so let's continue with the next question. You can pause the video here and read the question. So with the diagnosis of anaphylaxis, what drug will you administer? Straightforward. Two drugs with root and doses. You observed him for six hours and he got a and are discharging him. What group of patients are at risk of biphasic response to an allergen? So you need to write two points and you that was a straightforward one. You have educated him about likely opioid seeds used as spices in food have asked and have asked him to avoid them. And also you have provided him with an auto injector adrenaline. What other discharge requirements should you consider? Here people got in the trap and they said like he needs to be going home along with an adult. Uh, he himself is an adult and it's been six hours of observation. So I don't and you have not given him anything which will cause him to sleep or anything like that. So why do you need an adult to go with an adult? Uh, so that's that just doesn't make any sense. Uh, the right answers are uh, as follows. I'll tell you. So, so the first one was very straightforward adrenaline 0.5 milligram IM 1 is to 1000 hydrocortisone 200 milligram IV or prednisolone 50, 60 milligrams per oral chlorphenamine 4 mg no evil over here please normal saline 1 liter IV so what are the groups in which uh, biphasic reactions can happen patient with asthma patient with a history of biphasic reaction slow onset of symptoms with unknown trigger and possibly continuous absorption of the allergen you need to give three days course of steroid one milligram per kg prednisolone uh, I usually give about prednisolone 40 milligram per oral once a day for three days chlorophenamine four milligrams per oral three times a day for three days and then they have to follow up with an allergy specialist okay you can pause this one so let's look at the answers first one chest x-ray is obtained describe the abnormalities in the chest x-ray so again let's go by the ABCDE method airway the trachea seems to be moved to the right so tracheal deviation to the right breathing uh, collapse left lung with uh, lung markings not on the left side not extending up to the thoracic cage and then uh, C mediastinum looks okay with slight deviation to the right anything else I see a thin line around the heart so you can say pneumomediastinum and uh, D diaphragm so diaphragm appears to be normal however incompletely or inadequately visualized at the costophrenic angle E is uh, bones multiple rib fractures on the left side and subcutaneous emphysema on the left side you have addressed the pathology seen by a surgical procedure now when you reassess you still see that signs of pathology still persist and it's worsening remember in a trauma case tension pneumothorax you put a chest drain is and it just still persists and worsens that means there is a continuous leak going on and that signifies tracheobronchial injury and what do you do next is uh, you put another chest drain or multiple chest drains and uh, refer the patient for cardiothoracic surgery the definitive treatment is surgical treatment okay so that would be it and uh, let's look at the answer so a trachea shifted to right B you can look at it definitive treatment is operative repair You can pause the video here okay so let's look at the answers apart from neurogenic shock give other two causes of distributed shock so septic shock anaphylactic shock 
what do you understand by mixed venous oxygen saturation and central venous oxygen saturation how do they correlate with each other go back to your books and read it yeah mixed venous oxygen saturation is the blood sample or saturation obtained from a blood sample taken with a swan dance catheter the sample taken from the pulmonary artery and central venous oxygen saturation is the one which is taken from the superior vena cava or the right atrium or you can say from a central line okay and how do they correlate with each other central venous oxygen saturation is uh, five percent less than the mixed venous oxygen saturation you have now initiated noradrenaline through a central line and an artery line is placed you obtain that image so that is called a swinging pattern if you look at it uh, and it signifies that the patient is hypovolemic Describe the abnormalities in the extra abdomen. Okay, you can read it. So let's look at the answer. Describe the abnormality seen in the extra abdomen. So a dilated loop of large bowel seen in a coffee bean shape and uh, likely sigmoid volvulus. Uh, A right hip implant is seen. You can write whatever you see, which are abnormal things. Okay. Uh, based on the X-ray finding, what sign would you expect to see with contrast? So, if this patient goes with a contrast, you will see what we call it as a bird beak sign. Bird beak sign. And then you have done the IV access. You have taken bloods. You are in what initial management steps? The patient is complaining of constipation, abdominal distension. So. There is nausea, and diffusely tender, so pain is there. So you can give IV paracetamol, you can keep him nilparoral, IV paracetamol, nasogastric tube, uh, and uh, what you can do. So management steps would be that you can uh, refer to surgical specialty and start some fluids okay I pause here and uh, you can write the question read the question and write the answers okay so ECG is obtained if described the abnormality seen in the ECG. So what do you see? Uh, right, normal. Rhythm, normal. Left axis deviation, so write down left axis deviation. P waves, normal. PR segment appears normal. So QRS appears RS R dash pattern. Yeah, okay. ST. ST segment elevation with down sloping or coving ST segment in V1, V2, V3 with biphasic T waves or T wave inversion. Good. That's what you can write. What aspect of history would you like to obtain further? What is your diagnosis? It's Brugada syndrome. Aspect of history sudden cardiac death in age less than 40. Uh, in the FR chem final SAQ, this question was there recently, and they asked apart from sudden cardiac death in the family, what history would you take? So you can take history of palpitations in, and history of shortness of breath on exertion, or history of syncopal episodes in the past. Okay. So left axis division. Treatment is automated implantable cardioverter defibrillator. Uh, don't write ICD because ICD can be intercostal drainage. So you can say automated implantable cardioverter defibrillator. Next one. Mm -hmm. 
okay so this was a difficult one uh, which they can throw in just to see how good you are prepared in environmental emergencies